Hey guys, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and today we're going to go through five ways that you can save money home brewing. Yes, I said actually save money home brewing. So grab yourself a home brew, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned. All right, guys. So we all know that brewing can be expensive. There's a lot of equipment, there's a lot of things you need, especially as you get into all grain, kegging, that kind of thing. But there are ways that you can actually save money. So it may seem daunting when you go through and you say, man, I need to get all of this stuff, but there's things that you can do to save yourself money, time along the way, and we're gonna go through those. So first and foremost is buy in bulk. Buy in bulk, not every single Thing that you're gonna buy ingredients wise you're gonna use a whole lot of so I'm not saying go out and buy 50 pound bag of chocolate milk unless you always make porters right but what I am saying is the ones that you're using consistently over and over the two row maybe it's Pilsner maybe it's Citra hops those type of things that you're using in your recipes all the time that are very commonly found you can buy and save money by buying in bulk and so I only really buy two maybe three grains in bulk and that's two row Pilsner and I might do Maris Otter or something else but I don't do all my specialty grains or I definitely don't buy that much chocolate malt even though I do make porters and stouts and that kind of stuff but I just wouldn't use it fast enough and so that doesn't save me a whole lot of time or money and so in that case I buy the ones I use all the time I, I use Pilsner uh, in a lot of my sours and so I use a lot of Pilsner I use two row in most of my pale ale IPA recipes and, and even Pilsner for that as well and so I'm using those all the time so that makes sense for me to buy in bulk I also buy some of my bittering hops or hops that I use consistently, Cascade, Centennial, Citra. I use all of those quite often. And because I use some recipes that have those uh, all the time, I buy those in bulk. Not all the time am I buying a pound of hops, but I might buy a half a pound and still save money. Or maybe your local homebrew supply store says, if you buy four ounces versus one ounce, you get more money, right? More money off. And so those are ways that you can save money buying in bulk, but don't, definitely don't buy every single ingredient you make in bulk because you just won't use it all. Um, you can also buy in bulk with friends. So maybe you have other friends at homebrew and you want to split a bag of a 50 pound bag of two row or hops or whatever. Um, that's a different uh, suggestion. That way you don't necessarily have to use a whole 50 pound bag or a whole pound of hops, but you can split it with friends. Maybe people in your homebrew club would go in on that as well. So go ahead and check that out and ask friends. Number two, uh, buy a grain mill. And why I say that is because a lot of the homebrew supply stores, especially if you're buying online or even uh, places that you buy in person, will charge you sometimes 30 up to 50 cents more per pound of grains to have them milled or crushed before they send them to you. And so, yes, there's an added expense in buying a grain mill or getting one used, which we'll talk about later, but also um, that expense adds up over time. I mean, how many pounds of of uh, ingredients are you gonna buy and you, uh, over 50 cents every single pound, it doesn't take much before you've already bought your grain mill and you don't even have one, right? So purchasing a grain mill can save you money just from the cracked fees depending on where you buy your ingredients. Number three is make your own equipment. And I have videos on how to do a lot of that, making your own mash tun right? Um, that saves you a ton of money versus buying something that's pre put together or buying something even uh, that is stainless steel or something else. I use a rubber made cooler still to this day because it's cheaper and it's easy, right? And I've been able to make it myself for cheaper. Um, making a hop spider. You don't always have to buy one from a local homebrew supply store. You can make one with some PVC pipes some screws and some paint strainer bags. Um, that also leads me into, you know, back into the whole buy in bulk. Those paint strainer bags, you can buy them in bulk as well, right? So the equipment side of things, you can also buy in bulk. And so that's making your own equipment and using those things over and over will save you money. If you buy one or two you know, paint strainer bags at Lowe's, for instance, it's gonna cost you, you know, five or six bucks for like two of them. But you can buy a whole 25 pack or 30 pack for like 15 or $20 online. 
And so uh, make your own hop spider, have a video on how to do that. Um, you can also even make your own immersion chiller. My first immersion chiller I ever made was this one here. This is a 20 feet of copper piping and you just you buy a pipe bender and I bent this around a garbage can. But you could do this around, you can bend it around a, a, a keg for instance, right? And then you just have some hosing, some clamps, hook it on your garden hose and away you go. And so making your own equipment is a huge, huge money saver. Um, that 20 feet of copper is about 25 bucks at Lowe's or Home Depot or Home Improvement Store, right? But if you bought a immersion chiller online, it's gonna run you 60, 70, 80 bucks. So that's an easy way to save money. I used that one for a really long time. And then when I got another one, I didn't buy it new either. I, I bought it off of a friend of mine who no longer needed it. And uh, so that leads me into number four reusing yeast okay so you can reuse yeast a couple different ways i have a video on how to harvest yeast from commercial beers you can you're already buying a six pack of beers save their thing make a yeast starter and and you can save money by not having to buy uh, a yeast at your homebrew supply store or if you do buy one reuse it if it's a yeast you use all the time like um, white lab 001 or uso5 or if it's uh you know, some very common yeast that you use all of the time, dump some of the trube from the bottom of your, of your uh, thing after you get done siphoning into a secondary and dump some of that trube into the, uh, a, mace, a sanitized mason jar. Let that cool over, uh, you know, in a refrigerator with a loosely fit cap and then pull it out. You can dump off some of the, uh, decant off some of the liquid on the top, re kind of warm it up beforehand and just pitch the, the next one right in your next beer. And as long as it's not super different, right? So one goes from really hoppy to a not so hoppy beer, it's not gonna really affect the, the flavor all that much. A lot of that troop is just gonna fall back out again, but you're gonna have all that yeast uh, saved again. So sometimes the yeast actually does a better job on beers two, three, and four than it does on the first one because it already kind of knows what to do. As long as you're not saving that yeast for months and months and months, uh, you can still save it for a couple of months and still reuse it in your next beer. So a great way to save money, yeast is expensive. So go ahead and do that. And the last one, number five, is find used equipment or used equipment. There's stuff on Facebook Marketplace, there's stuff on Craigslist, there's uh, your homebrew uh, supply store probably sells used corny kegs versus new corny kegs. I've never bought a new corny keg in my life. I've never bought a new CO2 cylinder. I've always traded them in or bought them used from friends. Uh, maybe you have your uh, uh, homebrew club they generally, or, or even a Facebook page, for instance, may post stuff all of the time about uh, used equipment. I've seen more equipment used online that I don't need, that I thought about buying, but didn't buy, thankfully, um, because people go in and out of the hobby all the time. And so you don't need to necessarily buy a brand new kettle or a brand new immersion chiller or a brand new keg. You can buy all of these things used in relatively for like half or less of the price. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the video. I hope you guys liked it. There's five different ways of saving money home brewing. This is all about making good beer and doing it on the cheap, right? Don't break the bank. If at the end of the day, people come over and they try your beer and you make great beer, it doesn't matter what equipment you used. No one knows that I made this in a Rubbermaid ton, mash ton. All they know is, damn, that's a good beer. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Helps my tr channel out tremendously. Also, love the comments, keep them coming. And with that, Happy homebrewing and cheers.